in this part we will give the development of most powerful test giving its true like existence part and its sufficient part. First we shall give the definition of most powerful test and that test is of size alpha. For this we consider uh, P as a family of probability measures indexed by a parameter theta belonging to script theta which is a subset of script r to the power d, d belongs to the set of positive integers 1 to 3 up to infinity. That means script p is equal to class of those p theta satisfying p theta is a probability measure on omega script a and theta belongs to script theta. Now consider the problem of testing the hypothesis like h naught theta belonging to theta naught against h1 that theta belongs to theta 1 where theta naught union theta 1 is a subset of whole space and theta naught intersection theta 1 is equal to null space. Let m alpha be the class of all level alpha test for h naught and against h1 and alpha belongs to the close interval 0 1 and by the size or level of a test we mean its expected value is less than is equal to alpha for all theta belonging to theta naught. What is that what is the uh, quantity that we have taken expectation that is nothing but the function phi x which we call the test function or critical function. Next we consider x vector is equal to x1, x2, xn which where x1, x2, xn cut this part. Let x is equal to x1, x2, xn be n tuple iid random variable that means it is a random sample from a certain distribution px theta, theta belongs to theta and px theta is generated from capital P theta which belongs to script P. Actually px theta is probability density function or probability mass function of the set of random observations x and px theta sometimes discrete dist is, a, is the distribution function uh, of a discrete random variable or some continuous random variable. So in any case px theta is nothing but probability density function or probability mass function. Now we want to give the definition of most powerful test. Actually a level alpha test phi naught belonging to m alpha that m alpha is script m alpha is said to be most powerful which is abbreviated as capital MP for testing h naught that theta belongs to theta naught against the alternative theta is equal to theta 1 not belonging to theta naught if e theta 1 phi naught x e is greater than is equal to e theta 1 phi x for all phi belonging to m alpha. Actually most powerful means uh, it has maximum power against a particular alternative theta is equal to theta 1 among all tests that are of level alpha that means phi belonging to script m alpha. We state a theorem that is called Neyman Pearson lemma and this is of course the fun called fundamental part of the lemma. For testing theta is equal to theta naught, here theta naught is just a single tone set, theta naught is a value of theta at a particular point against h1 theta is equal to theta 1 that is also a single tone point and that theta 1 differs from theta naught. A test phi naught given by phi naught x is equal to 0 if px theta 1 is less than k into px theta naught and 1 if px theta 1 greater than k into px theta naught where k is non-negative and phi naught uh, 
on the boundary that uh, x uh, for all x p x theta is equal to k p p x theta naught are so determined that e theta naught phi naught x is equal to alpha. Here alpha belongs to the open interval 0 1 and alpha is prefixed. Furthermore, if a test satisfies 1 and 2 and I put uh, equation number 1 corresponding to phi naught x and equation number 2 corresponding to e theta naught phi naught x is equal to alpha. So, k and the boundary value uh, e are so determined that the test is of size alpha. Again, if phi naught is most powerful at level alpha for h naught against h 1, then for some k greater than is equal to 0, it satisfies 1 almost everywhere. It also satisfies 2 unless there exists a test for some for size less than alpha with power 1. First, we give the proof of the theorem in terms of its existence part and then uh, give its sufficient part and the other part will contain the necessary part. For the existence part, we we first define a random variable y which is equal to p x theta 1 divided by p x theta naught. Actually, p x theta naught may be is equal to 0 for some values of x. So, we uh, get p theta naught, p x theta naught greater than 0 that has probability measure under theta naught is equal to 1. So, the part p x theta naught is equal to 0 can be neglected under the uh, under theta is equal to theta naught in terms of probability. We take the random variable y to be non-negative with probability 1. Thus, the random variable y is well defined under the null hypothesis h naught. And to get the existence part, we define the probability measure like alpha y is equal to probability under theta naught of p x theta naught. Let us define a function alpha y which is equal to p theta naught such that p x theta 1 greater than y multiplied by p x theta naught. And that can be written as p x theta 1 greater than y into p, p x theta 1 and p x theta naught greater than 0 and that gives probability under theta naught of y greater than small y and that gives 1 minus g theta naught y where g theta naught y is the cumulative distribution function of y under the null hypothesis h naught. Let us define a function alpha y which is equal to p theta naught such that p x theta 1 greater than y multiplied by p x theta naught and that can be written as p x theta 1 greater than y into p, p x theta 1 and p x theta naught greater than 0 and that gives probability under theta naught of y greater than small y and that gives 1 minus g theta naught y where g theta naught y is the cumulative distribution function of, of y under the null hypothesis h naught. So, we have two situations, uh, one situation is that k is continuity point for which we have alpha k is equal to alpha k minus 0 and that gives uh, is equal to alpha. Then the test given by 1 satisfies 2 regardless of the choice of phi naught at the boundary. Sometimes k becomes the point of discontinuity then we set phi naught at the boundary as gamma is equal to alpha minus alpha k divided by alpha k minus 0 minus alpha k. Thus, we get e theta naught phi naught x is equal to probability under theta naught p x theta 1 greater than k multiplied by p x theta naught plus gamma times p theta naught probability that x theta 1 is equal to k multiplied by p x theta naught and that gives alpha k plus alpha minus alpha k divided by alpha k minus 0 minus alpha k into alpha k minus 0 minus alpha k and that becomes alpha. The existence part of a test of the form 1 satisfying 2 
has now been established. Next, I, co I come to the proof of the sufficient part. For the sufficient part, we shall prove that any test of the form 1 satisfies 2 is most powerful. We pick any phi belonging to script m alpha. Then for any x belonging to script x, actually that script x is the sample space. Consider the product phi naught x minus phi x multiplied by p x theta 1 minus k into p x theta naught by 1 when p x theta 1 is greater than k into p x theta naught we get phi naught x is equal to 1 and that is greater than is equal to any phi x belonging to 0 1. Similarly, when p x theta 1 is less than k into p x theta naught we get phi naught x is equal to 0 which is less than is equal to any phi x belonging to 0 1. Automatically the difference phi naught x minus phi x into p x theta 1 minus k p x theta naught is greater than is equal to 0. Of course, when p x theta 1 is equal to k p x theta naught we get the product is equal to 0. Now, phi naught x minus phi x into p x theta 1 minus k into p x theta naught greater than is equal to 0 and that implies integration over phi naught x minus phi x multiplied by p x theta 1 minus k p x theta naught into d x is greater than is equal to 0. Naturally, if we multiply phi naught x by p x theta 1, we get e theta 1 phi naught x and if I, we multiply phi x by p x theta naught, we get e theta 1 phi x of uh, and phi x p x theta 1 multiplied by p x theta 1 d x, we get e theta 1 phi x phi naught x multiplied by p x theta naught integration over script x, we will get e theta naught phi naught x and phi x multiplied by p x theta naught integrated over script x, we will get e theta naught phi x and naturally uh, we get e theta 1 phi naught x minus e theta 1 phi x is greater than is equal to k multiplied by e theta naught phi naught x minus e theta naught phi x and we have e theta naught phi, na phi naught x is equal to alpha and e theta naught phi x is less than is equal to alpha for all phi belonging to m alpha. Uh, ultimately, we get that product is greater than is equal to 0. Hence, we get e theta 1 phi naught x is greater than is equal to e theta 1 phi x for all phi belonging to m alpha. This proves the sufficient part of the theorem that means phi naught is most powerful is of its size. From this theorem, we can say we can say that if there are n independent observations from normal distribution with common mean, mu and variance unity, we can find most powerful test for testing mu is equal to mu naught against mu greater than mu 1 by using the ratio p x theta 1 divided by p x theta naught and that gives ultimately that the test based on the sample mean is uniformly based on uniformly based for testing mu is equal to mu naught against mu is equal to mu 1. Actually that test is right tail test based on x bar and that uh, tail point can be determined by using the level alpha cutoff point of normal distribution with mean mu variance 1 by root 10, 1 by n. That gives the, uh, that gives the idea of getting most powerful test from by using Neyman Pearson lemma and using the normal distribution. 
and it can be shown that this test is independent of any alternative mu 1 greater than mu naught. So, that test can also be said as uniformly most powerful for testing mu is equal to mu naught against every mu such that mu greater than mu naught and that test is of size alpha. In this part, we have given the idea of getting most powerful or uniformly most powerful test using the those distributions which have range independent of the parameter under consideration. In the next part of the section, we will give some idea when uh, the range of the distribution is in the is depending on theta.